Too much of us are in torment because we're worried about our future. God is going to be in your future. And whatever you need in your future, He's going to supply to you. The Creator of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things, shows you you have been predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. You are destined to reign in heavenly places in Messiah forever and ever. You have been adopted as a son or a daughter of Father God Himself, the God of Israel, Yahweh God, your Maker. You have been adopted in Him. He so loves you and I that He took upon flesh and blood, came to earth, shedding His blood, dying in our place so that we could be forgiven and washed of sin so we, that we would be forever holy and blameless before Him as sons and daughters. In light of this, Paul says, who can bring a charge against you? You are God's elect. All the force of heaven, all the strength of God's love is behind you. The fullness of His love is towards you. So Paul says, in light of this, if God is for us, who can be against us? At the end of the day, you're going to win. That doesn't mean that we might not experience setbacks. It doesn't mean that we might not experience tremendous hardships. But at the end of the day, you're going to come out glorified in Jesus. Paul says in verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Consider this. If Father God gave you the very best he could, if Father God gave you his own heart when he clothed himself in humanity in the person of Jesus and died in your place, if he gave you that, his own essence, his own nature, is he not also going to give you everything else that you need? That's why Paul said, God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Everything that you and I need pertaining to godliness, pertaining to God's call on our life, he's going to give us I mean, so many of us have experienced miracles just at the last minute when we needed something, bam, there it was. Some of us have experienced answers to prayer that are just phenomenal. Everything that you and I need, he's going to give us. If he gave you his son, Paul is asking the question, will he not also give you everything else? So listen again. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? And so I just want to encourage you today, whatever you need, trust him for. Trust Hashem for. All his love is focused on you. And he continues on, Paul said, who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, he who was raised, who was at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. So what Paul is saying here, once again, is that not only are all our needs going to be met, who has a testimony today that you can just think of a need in your life, even that you recently had, could be a big thing, it could be a little thing, but that God met your need. I mean, he gave you the right person to come and help you, the right person to come and pray for you, the right person to fix your car, the right person to fix your house. He led you to the right doctor. Whatever it is, God will supply all our needs. Paul is encouraging us here to trust him. Let's trust him. Too many of us, listen now, spend much time worrying because we're projecting all these scenarios that might happen in the future and we worry what's going to happen in the future. What I want to encourage you today with is this. 
God is going to be in your future. And whatever you need in your future, he's going to supply to you. Paul said if he did not spare his own son, but send him to die in your place because he loves you so much because his arms of love are encircling you completely. If God sent his son to save you, will he not also freely give you everything else that you need in your life? And so too much of us are in torment because we're worried about our future. What's gonna happen in our future? But the same God that sent Jesus to die in your place 2,000 years ago, he's gonna be in your future supplying all your needs according to his riches and glory. The same God in heaven that sent his son for you will supply your needs in your future. So let's stop projecting these demonic thoughts about our future and the thoughts that we have that cause us torment are thoughts in which Jesus is absent. In other words, we worry about the future, but if we think about the thought that we're having about our future that's causing us to worry, we can tell if we have awareness that that thought of worry does not include Jesus in the future. We're projecting a thought of worry about our future, but Jesus is not there when we're worrying. Well, what's gonna happen if this situation happens? What's gonna happen if this situation happens? But notice that in your worrisome thought, Jesus is not present, but the reality is he will be present in your future every single day of your life going forward into eternity. So there's nothing to worry about. This is why Jesus said, don't worry about your life. What's going to happen tomorrow? Just focus on today. The number of hairs on your head are numbered. God's going to supply all your needs. Don't worry about your future. That's for unbelievers to worry about. No, God loves you so much, Jesus said, I came to die for you. And we're gonna supply all your needs every single day of your life. Beloved, let's rouse ourselves. let's encourage ourselves in the Lord to say yes to his word. Let's say, yes, Father, I will trust you. Say it with me. Say, yes, Father, I am going to trust you. I'm gonna stand your word. Father, forgive me for this foul spirit of unbelief. Jesus, I rebuke this foul spirit of distrust in you. I agree, Jesus, that you will be in my future. I agree with your word that he that did not withhold his only son, but spared his only son for me, he will also with him freely give us all things. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things. Let's say yes today. Let's make it our ambition to lead a care-free life because we trust God. Jesus said, listen to what I said, let's make it our endeavor, beloved, to lead a care-free life. Jesus said, all you that are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. He said, we know your needs for tomorrow. The number of hairs on your head are numbered. Not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from the Father. Let's endeavor, beloved, to trust Jesus and lead a carefree life. Jesus said, learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus said, unless we become like little children, we shall in no wise enter the kingdom of God. What did he mean by that? Well, certainly one of the things he must have been pointing to is children's trust. Children aren't worried about tomorrow. Children are not worried about tomorrow. Children are just in the moment. They're trusting that tomorrow is going to be good. And this is what God is calling you and I to be restored to. So let's rebuke the foul spirit of distrust. Let's believe today, beloved, that God is with us and that he did not spare his own son for you. If he didn't spare his own son, he will not withhold anything from you, but he's gonna give you everything you need to complete your journey on this earth, happy and healthy in him 
as we open up our hearts to him, surrender our lives to him fully and trust him. Amen. Baruch Hashem, would you say yes to, to the Lord, beloved one, and say, Father, I believe you for that. And I rebuke the spirit of distrust off my life. Continuing on, Paul says this, who is the one who condemns? In other words, there's no enemy that can stand against you. Nothing can separate you from this great love that God has for you. Christ Jesus is he who died. Yes, rather, he who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Paul says, in all these things, we're overwhelmingly conquerors. Paul is just affirming here, nothing to be afraid of. Nothing is going to prevent the Father's love from ministering to you, being present with you, meeting you, filling you with comfort every day of your life. And nothing that you ever experience, no hardship, no trial, will ever put a blockade between you and the Father. Nothing is going to prevent Him from reaching you right where you're at. You see, wherever you go, He will be there. And so Paul says, who can bring a charge against us? It's Christ Jesus that died for us. And He reigns now, raised, seated at the Father's right hand. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to him. So what can stop God's love from ministering to you? He's also, Paul said in the 34th verse, interceding for us. He's praying for us, making sure that we continue on going from strength to strength and glory from glory. And so once again, Paul says, in light of this, who will separate us? from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution, famine or nakedness or pale or sword? Do not be afraid. Fear nothing. Do you know over a hundred times in the Bible, the Lord commands us, fear not. I command you this day, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. The Bible actually tells us in the book of Revelation, that hell is for the fearful and the unbelieving. So Paul is coming against that spirit of fear and unbelief right now by telling us that we're God's elect. We were chosen in his love before the foundation of the world, not because of acts of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And that his love for us will never be stopped now. And he's gonna be sufficient for you every day of your life. And so Paul said, even in his own walk, he said he was being put to death all day long because of all the terrible persecution he was going through. For your sake, Paul said, we're being put to death all day long. We're considered a sheep to be slaughtered. But then he said this, but in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. I want you to get this. Some of us think the only way to live victoriously is if God lies us down in a bed of roses. We think that our whole life has to be pampered in order to experience these realities that Paul is declaring here, that I just got done preaching about. But notice that when Paul declared that nothing can separate us from the love of God, notice that when Paul declared this, he was experiencing this in life. For your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. So Paul was declaring this eternal victory that we have, why he was experiencing tremendous hardship, being beaten, shipwrecked, sleepless nights, in jail. And yet in all those things that Paul was experienced, he said this, but in all these things, verse 37, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And so sometimes when we hit a difficulty, we let go of the word of God and we just throw out everything that I just said. The only time we're believing is when things are easy. But Paul wasn't writing this when things were easy. He was writing it amidst tremendous trial, suffering and pain. And yet he had the attitude in the midst of all that hardship of a 
victor and a conqueror. So the challenge for you and I, beloved, is that when we hit a wave, when we encounter a test, when we hit hardship, we want to continue to praise God. We want to continue to declare his victory over our life. We want to declare in the midst of hardship, praise you, Father, your grace is sufficient and you're causing everything to work together for my good. So I bless you, I praise you, I believe in your divine strategy. And somehow, Father, you saw fit to create an adversary. You saw fit to use hardship. You saw fit to create an enemy because you knew that I needed an opponent in order to become fully mature as your son and daughter, that I needed to overcome that I need to count it all joy when I hit various trials and tribulation, knowing that it's producing in me the stature of a mature son or a mature daughter. So once again, Paul just got done declaring that we are more than conquerors through everything. And when he said it, he himself was going through tremendous hardship. So Paul continues in verse 37, but we in all these things overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us, And then he says in verse 38, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come. Notice that, nor things to come, because most worry has to do with thinking about the future. But Paul says, I am convinced that neither death, some of you are afraid of death. Paul says, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. This about sums it up, right? Of anything that you and I will ever experience, past, present, or future, Paul says, I'm convinced that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Father, I speak right now the spirit of power and revelation into the souls of your beloved ones, these that are watching or listening right now. Father, we receive your word. We say yes to your word. And all these things that Paul declared that I just spoke are true. And Father, I wanna personally say to you, I am sorry for not always being in agreement with faith. Father, we say to you, we are sorry and we repent for sometimes allowing the devil to get us down. Sometimes, Father, we've let ourselves fall into discouragement. and We haven't straight as, stayed as strong as your word says we should be, that we are overwhelmingly conquerors. So, Father, today we stand in alignment with your word, with the words that you reveal to us through Paul, Shaul the Apostle. We stand today, Father, saying yes to you, that through everything we will ever face in life, your love will be constant, and that we are more than conquerors and victors in Jesus. So, Father, it's our intention today to go through life praising you continuously with a smile on our face. Father, to stay in faith, to stay in joy. Father, to stay praising you regardless of what we face, even until the end. Father, to offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for the rest of our days unto the glory of your name and in the name of Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. Beloved, in journeying through the book of Romans, we discover the key truths relating to our salvation. Paul begins by telling us the whole world is guilty before the Lord and that no man can save himself by his good works. Then Paul introduces the grace of the Lord through the person of Messiah Yeshua. Finally, at the end of the book of Romans, beginning in chapter 12, Paul tells us how you and I ought to respond to this great grace that Father God has given us. 
Paul urges us to offer up to the Lord our bodies as a living sacrifice. And he tells us next not to be conformed to this world. This ought to affect every area of our lives, including beloved ones, our finances. If you're not fully offering to the Lord a sacrifice of praise with your finances, or if this ministry is blessing you by the Father's grace and you have not yet offered up to him a sacrifice of praise financially through it, I simply wanna ask you, beloved one, to do that today.